Celine. Olá! Olá! Olá, bom dia. E finalmente, peço imensa desculpa por este, este início tão uh, atribulado. Estamos a transmitir em direto no Facebook um, e, portanto, eu e a Mariana já fizemos aqui uma introdução, mas eu volto a fazer. Portanto, estamos aqui para celebrar os Portuguese Women in Tech Awards uh, 2020. Um, é uma oportunidade muito boa para dar visibilidade às mulheres em tecnologia. Um, vamos ter agora, portanto, obrigada a Celine também por, por nos ajudar na organização deste evento e desta iniciativa. Um, e vamos agora ter uma conversa. Mariana, passo-te a palavra para essa, para essa conversa um, qual, e nós estaremos deste lado para, para qualquer questão. Ok, obrigada. Well, in this part of the, of the event, the online event, we, we're going to talk in English. Hi, Celine, how are you? Hello, Mariana. Hello, everybody. And I'm sorry, I'm not sure what happened, but um, I'm happy we made it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So I, I would like you to introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit more about you and about your, your journey. Okay, um, so as, as you can hear from my accent, I'm French. My name is Céline. I'm a professor at Catolica. Um, I'm a professor in the area of strategy and innovation management. And um, um, in a nutshell, I started my, my, my journey um, studying in France, I, um, I, I studied at Ecole Normale Supérieure, which is a, a, a school for professors, and then I took my PhD at Ecole Polytechnique. And let me just share a, a small story about Ecole Polytechnique, which I think is relevant for what is happening today. So Ecole Polytechnique is one of the top engineering schools in France. And um, when I was born in the 70s, is the first time that they started accepting women in this school. Um, and the funny part is that it's a military school, so that's probably one of the reasons why they were so late in, in having women. And the first year that uh, they accepted women, which was 1972, I was born in 71, so you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an important uh, date for me. Um, the first woman that was accepted there um, ended the number one of, uh, of her promotion, of her group. So, you know, I think that's, uh, that's wow. something to be very proud of. That's a sign, that's a sign. Uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a very strong symbol. And uh, unfortunately, I have to say that today, Ecole Polytechnique only has 20% of students being women. So things, you know, in, in almost 50 years, um, it has progressed from zero but to only 20%. So there's still a lot to be done. So it was, you know, just a, a small part of, of, of my journey. After taking my PhD, I went to work for a tech company in, in New York. Um, then I joined um, AT Kearney and I was working in consulting in London and after that I decided that really I, what I wanted to do was to go back to academic life and I became a professor at uh, Queen Mary University of London which is a, a business school and it was the, the business school of a university that did not have a business school so I was part of the in a way startup team that created the business school there. I stayed there for a few years and then I joined Catolica and at Catolica, I've been doing you know, many different things. I've been teaching, I've uh, launched the uh, Center for Technological Innovation and Entrepreneurship. I have been the director of the master's program. And today I'm the Dean for Executive Education. So I'm in charge of the programs for more mature and experienced people. So that's, that's my journey in a nutshell. Did you ever felt that being a woman was bad or good for you? So it's interesting. So, I, you know, I can, of course, share my own experience, but I have the, the privilege that I have taught lots of young women and I have heard their, their, their perspective. So uh, when I was a young woman, so when I was a student and when I started my career, I never felt anything. Um, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't feel it was a disadvantage to be a woman. Um, I started feeling it later in, in, in my career. And that's also what I feel from, from younger women that I interact with. And that's the concept of the glass ceiling that you know in, it has been uh, studied a lot is that basically at the beginning of the career women perform really well actually as we know in universities women perform better than men so that's there's there's no there's no problem there the issue um takes place later in the career when basically it, it's it's um it's a gentleman's club where it's much harder to, 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 be, to be part and to be accepted as a woman. Because basically, um, I mean, my experience from companies, from universities, from startups, is that there's a certain level in the career where what you find is that 
it's mostly men and the rule have, have been made by them and for them. So of course, as women, we don't fit. Um, I don't think it's done on purpose. You know, I, I wouldn't go as far as, as saying that, you know, men on purpose want to exclude women. But what I think is happening is that the whole system has been designed by them. And of course, you know, for many reasons, because, because we have kids, but, you know, and, and, and lots of other things, it's much harder to succeed in this, in this format. Mm -hmm. And um, why is it so unusual to, to find these female entrepreneurs? And uh, I imagine you have this experience also, and mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not in the, this, only in this level, but in the, I imagine that it's, it's, it's not only the, um, the access, but other reasons that, that are uh, responsible for this. Yeah, so as, as you know, Mariana, because you and I have discussed that before, um, at Catolica in the CTA, we have created a Women Entrepreneurship Award. And let me tell you a little bit the, the journey that we went through to get to, to, get to that idea. When so, was that? In the what year? This so year. it was created in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, so what happened is that what we, what we found is that, um, so first, you know, one of the first uh, striking moments was uh, we, we gave the award to one of the best, best master thesis. It was a female student. And she had done a work at, uh, at Catolica on, on, on women entrepreneurship. And she did something very simple. She went to interview all of her colleagues, all the people who went through the same exact program and asked them if they felt ready to be entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, the funny part is that, you know, all other things equal, 69% of women felt ready and 82% of men felt ready. So, you're, you know, and that's, you know, fresh from university. So... That was, you know, that was a striking moment for us. And we realized that from the beginning, women put li more limitation and they, they have, in a way, they, uh, they limit themselves in, 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 in their desire to become mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Later on, I, I looked at um, research that has been done on, on this topic. And what I found is that it's not just our students. This is something that is happening uh, all over the world. Global, and really, yeah. men feel more ready than women. So that's the first obstacle if i may say for women to become entrepreneurs but that's not the only one um, after that what we have looked into is um, the difficulty for women to get funding for their startups that's a big problem um, it's much harder for a woman to get funding than for men for many reasons um, venture capitalists are essentially men so they tend to rely more on on on, on the type of qualities that they find in men Um, and then when they get funding, women get less. So they have a harder time getting funded, but, and they also get less funding. So that's, that's very difficult. And finally, if that, if that was not hard enough, what we found <laughs> is that <Enough. laughs> when, exactly, when women you know, make it to become an entrepreneur, when they finally get funding, they get less visibility than men. So yeah. you know, in a way, the mission that we found for ourselves was you, you know, our mission is we have to find women entrepreneurs that are inspiring role models so that we can create a new generation of uh, women entrepreneurs. And those women entrepreneurs, if they don't see the role models, it's going to be much harder for them mm -hmm. to get started. So, you know, it's a, it's a small part of, of what I think, you know, we, we want to do. Um, and actually, uh, you know, I find that the, the, the Portuguese Women in Tech initiative and this, and this prize and award comes from the same philosophy, which is we have to get You know, there's a lot of women who have great quality. I know that they exist. They just get less visibility. So our job, and I want to congratulate uh, the Portuguese Women in Tech Initiative, is really to get to make these women uh, visible. And what we do in the Women Entrepreneurship Award is the same thing, is that we, uh, we created a, 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 a jury, we created a, a whole initiative to get more women uh, visible. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel about the, the winners in the last editions? And of, the, of which one? Of the Women Entrepreneurship Award? Yes. Yeah, so it's very interesting. So, you know, we had, so first, uh, in, so the first um, edition was 2019, and then we had a second edition in 2020. So in 2019, the winner is uh, Joana and from Sensei. So she's, uh, she's very much, she's very tech. So mm -hmm. you know, she, she, she would, she's also in, in, this, in this tech world. And she was recognized for her work in, in, in so Sensei is a technology for, um, for retail. It's very, very, very interesting. And this year, the winner is a student finance, Marta, and it's 
also a very strong uh, um, tech dimension. So I find it's very interesting that in a way, um, and, and I mean, we know that is that the, the association between tech and entrepreneurship is of course very, very important. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that uh, before. Um, yesterday, when we when we talked about this this session, uh, you told me that you started to say yes to to some invitations when you realized that women um, didn't appear often mm -hmm. in these uh, events. Um, why do you think this happens, and uh, what can we can we do to change this? Um, I know that appearing and find role models is uh, the first step to to do this, but um, I think it's um, it's always related to 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 ourselves to 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 the way we we know ourselves better, and and to I mean it's it's an interior work and then uh, exterior, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, girls are raised to be a collegial, so to help the community, and they are not raised to win. Uh, boys are raised to win. Um, and, you know, so basically we, as girls, and, and, and we, we still um, raise girls this way today, girls are raised to think about, you know, how they can include more people and not about how to um, be vis more visible. Um, you know, there's another study that has been done that shows that uh, when a man has 60% of the skills for a new job he would apply, a woman will only apply when she has 100% of the skills. So, you know, I think when you, first, I think it's very important for women to become aware of those elements. You know, most, I, I mean, I, when I was, you know, I don't know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago, I was not aware of those elements. So, you know, I thought, you know, if I don't feel ready to apply, maybe a man will not feel ready to apply as well. When you understand better how things work, then you, you start thinking, you know, if they're going to go for the race, you know, I should go, I should go as well. Um, it's also, it's a, it, this is a very hard world out there. And, uh, and it's very hard for women to be judged on the, on the same qualities as men. In a way, when a man is competitive, we think he's, um, he's, a, he's a good guy. When a woman is competitive, we think that she's aggressive. Um, and, and, you know, as women, we are not used to that and we don't really like that image. So mm -hmm. the whole game is to try to play the same game without seeming too aggressive, which, which to be fair, is, is, is totally unfair because, you know, why, why is it accepted on one side and not on the other? Mm -hmm. But that's, that's the world we live in. I also believe that the more there will be women um, in those positions and, and, and running for this type of position, the easier it's going to be for the next generations of, of women, I hope. Mm -hmm. And what would be the, the best tips to, to give to these uh, girls that are watching us now and starting <laughs> and thinking about to start the new business or thinking about to apply uh, this award next year or thinking about beginning something? So first, you know, um, if someone tells you that you're ambitious and aggressive, take it as a compliment, okay? <laughs> so ambitious and aggressive for men is good. I think it should be good for women as well. Um, you know, I don't think we should sacrifice our feminine values, but I think we should accept the more masculine values that we women can, can have. Um, in terms of visibility, we also have to be aware that um, if we don't, if we don't exist in the media, if we don't, if we are not visible, we don't exist. So it's not good enough to be good at what we do. We have to be good at what we do, and we have to be visible. Of course, Mariana, you live in the world of media, so you know that even better than any of us. But really, it's about. I think it's important for um, for women to accept the game of uh, of, of visibility, um, mm -hmm. and and being visible is not is not bad. Actually, it's good. Um, and let's think about it as a almost like a generation thing, you know, if we become visible, we are ready to inspire the, the, the next generation. Mm -hmm. Actually, Mariana, if you, if you allow me, I, I did an exercise looking at, uh, at uh, the, the magazine that you put together, which is, you know, one of the questions to all the, the winners was, what, who are your sources of inspiration? And yesterday I went through it and I thought it was very interesting. I don't know if, you know, if you've, if you've done that exercise, but, you know, that says a lot about who are the role models of young women. Yes. So let me tell you, there's basically three categories. One category is 
my mother, my grandmother, uh -huh. my aunt, right? Yes, so family is a big, big source of, uh, of inspiration and, and that's amazing. And, you know, I'm a mother as well, so I like to think that I'm, I can inspire my daughters. Uh -huh. The second one is uh, basically, you know, my boss or, the, you know, the people I work with. And then the third one is the visible people. So uh, we have here, we have the, you know, the, the ladies of, of NASA, we have Melinda Gates, we have Marie Curie. So there's a lot of, of very inspiring role models. So I think the game here is that, so mother, aunt and grandmother, I think will always be there. And, and there's not, we don't need to do much more for this to, to exist. Um, the boss is, so, you know, for, for all of you who have a boss, or for all of you who are a boss, Think about the role that you're playing for the younger generation. And then those role models, those visible people, um, somebody may also mentioned uh, Michelle Obama. So, you know, those women are great inspiration. So we have to find more of those and make them visible so that they can become more sources of, uh, of inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the last question is about this award and uh, in what way it can help changing something and um, putting uh, these women uh, on stage it's um, I think it's um, it's a sign of confidence of course but it's like a, a, a new step to what what can this award change in this uh, tech uh, ecosystem in Portugal so as we know there's there's few women in in tech and the way, the way I see it is that it's, it's a vicious circle that can become virtuous. Um, as a young woman today, someone who finishes high school, if she considers or if she is interested in tech, maybe she's thinking or maybe her parents are telling her, oh, you know, this is not really a world for you. You know, do, are you sure that this is what you want to do with? You know, it's going to be hard. It's mostly guys. Actually, I mean, and we've all read and heard those really bad stories of of tech companies or where it's mostly guys and where they, they don't treat well the, mm -hmm. the girls or the women. Um, so, you know, there's, I, I'm confident that one day there will be a tipping point that we're not there yet. You know, when there's only 5% of women, it's not enough to change things. When there's only 10% of women, it's not enough. I don't know what is the tipping point, but I suspect that after maybe 25% or 30%, the behaviors are gonna change. The men are gonna be, more careful about the type of jokes that they make. But let me tell you, it's not just in tech, you know, I sit at the board of companies where it's mostly men and, you know, there, there, there are situations where men behave in ways that you feel uncomfortable as a woman. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, and the day that there's, the day that um, the number of women goes up, things change. And I have seen that happening. So it is, it has happened in board. It is happening slowly. It is happening in tech. So it's very important for those young women to see that it's possible. So if they see a boss who's a woman and who's successful and happy and, and has a balanced life, you know, then they think it's possible for them. So it's mm -hmm. really important to create those role models for younger generations. Mm -hmm. This is how change is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Great is role models. But uh, is it important to, to complain or to say it loud when, when that happens to you? Because... Um, most of the times in these interviews, um, the girls I interview, um, they say they, they never felt um, personally this impact or something that is wrong. But sometimes I feel that we are not aware to this. I mean, we, we don't feel it's... Uh, I don't, I'm not talking about um, these difficult times when you are harassed or I'm not, I'm not talking about the, this uh, difficult, uh, more difficult situations. I'm, I'm only talking about simple situations that you are micro, um, that you feel micro um, discrimination. Mm -hmm. But some, sometimes you don't feel like it, uh, it is discrimination. I feel that it comes back to what we said at the beginning, Mariana, which is um, at the beginning of your career, at the beginning of anyone's career, um, you know, it's pretty balanced. And in most situations, in most, you know, in most environment being, you know, even in tech, it's when people go up in the career that things change. And let me give you an example from the world I come from, which is from the university. So in, 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 in different settings, I have tried to discuss the issue of, of uh, women being a minority. 
for instance, in consulting, but you know, in, in many other industries. Mm -hmm. When I discuss that with undergrad students or master students who are between 21 and 23 years old, and I describe the reality, and the reality is that today at the top, at the, in the partnerships of consulting firms or of law firms, the number of partners is between 25 and 33%. 33% is already an amazing number. But I mean, this is far from being balanced, right? We should not be happy with that. So when I discuss that with them, I can see in their eyes that they think that this is something that will happen to them 10 years from today, so in, in 10 years, ten and years. that by then things will be different. So they're confident that the world is changing and that what I'm describing is something from my generation. Unfortunately, and I'm very sad to, to share that, they are wrong. This is not something from my, I mean, it was, wrong, it was worse in my time. It is very slowly getting better, but it's not gonna get better for them. And then when I get the same conversation with MBA students, by this time they are 28 to 30, they understand exactly what I'm talking about. But you know what is the issue? Is that by the time I get to, to the MBA, there's only between 35 and 40% of women. So a lot of them have gone out of the market already, and it's too late to have an impact. So my great frustration as a professor is that if we have the conversation early, like you know, 22, 23, they don't even understand that this is an issue. And if we have the conversation later at 28 or 29, they understand the issue, but a lot of them have left the market already. So I'm not sure when is the right moment, but you know, and for, for the young women who are listening to us, let me tell you, uh, we still have to fight. We still have to fight. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you so much, Celine, for your um, reflections. I mean, uh, for your thoughts. And thank you, Mariana. I thank you, everybody. Happy. Congratulations, uh, Liliana and uh, Ines. It's a great, great initiative. Thank I was you. there the first time in, in Oporto. Uh, you know, in, it was in the world where we could even kiss each other. There was a lot <laughs> of kisses. Um, so let me send you. Kisses to everyone and congratulations to everybody who's, uh, who's, um, uh, who, who was part of this, of this initiative, who was nominated, who uh, won, or even for those who did not win, you're going to win next year. Um, and we need more of that. No, thank you very much, Lynn. And, and I think you mentioned something that is very, very important, role models. We need like these women that were nominated, that, are now, that were finalists and, that, and now are winners. They are the role models that we need for the next generations. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, I'm, I'm not a, believe, a believer that everything is going to be better just because time will pass. We need to do something. Uh, and that's the reason why we are doing this with Portuguese Women in Tech, not only with the awards, but with all the other initiatives. So we can definitely try to move the needle a little bit uh, because that's something that we need to do uh, and urgently. So thank you very much, uh, Celine. I'm going to- Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you to the as a participants. Mariana, voltamos aqui a nós. Agora as coisas já estão a funcionar em condições. <risos> um, se calhar eu vou, para, para, porque já que nós interrompemos isto, eu vou só aqui fazer um bocadinho de enquadramento outra vez do, de, da iniciativa. Portanto, nós estamos aqui hoje para celebrar aqui as Mulheres em Tecnologia, os Portos e do Women in Tech Awards 2020. Esta é a terceira, a, a terceira um, a edição que nós estamos a fazer. Como a Celine uh, mencionou, nós fizemos a primeira edição no Porto, depois estivemos em, estivemos em Lisboa o ano passado e este ano decidimos fazer um bocadinho diferente, portanto estamos aqui, ou tivemos que fazer um bocadinho diferente, estamos aqui online. Uh, a Portuguese Women in Tech, para quem nos está uh, a ouvir ou a ver pela primeira vez, é uma, uma organização que nasceu em 2016 e tem esta dupla missão. Por um lado, apoiar quem já está em tecnologia, dando visibilidade, capacitação uh, e criando oportunidades. E por outro lado, um, a, 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 basicamente aumentar o pipeline, garantir que mais meninas que eventualmente queiram olhar para a tecnologia como uma possibilidade, tenham acesso à informação, a role models, como estávamos a falar, um, e a inspiração para o poderem fazer. Nós temos feito várias iniciativas, esta é uma delas, já lançamos também o nosso programa de mentoria, temos um conjunto de ferramentas que, também, que já, já lançamos, e em 2021 nós queremos continuar a fazer estas iniciativas, queremos poder-nos, obviamente, encontrar presencialmente, que também é importante, e queremos também lançar iniciativas que nos, nos, nos consigamos trabalhar com crianças que estão na escola e podemos inspirar desde muito cedo a olhar para esta, para esta área como uma possibilidade. Queria também 
Agradecer aqui aos sponsors, portanto, à Bosch, à Bachelain, à Sky, à Volkswagen Digital Solutions, à Natixis e à Landing Jobs pela possibilidade que nos deram de organizar esta iniciativa e, obviamente, um agradecimento muito especial à Celine, ao Pierre, do, do Center for Technological Innovation and Entrepreneurship da Universidade Católica de Lisboa, que, nos, que é aqui o principal um, apoio que nós temos para, para lançar este, este, este evento. 